Welcome back. In the last video we talked about how individual species can only survive certain temperatures and pHs and that their actual balance has to be quite finely balanced because they can't survive pHs or temperatures which are too far away from their ideal. In this video we're going to cover the next top point which says compare responses of named ectothermic and endothermic organisms to changes in the ambient temperature and explain how these responses assist in temperature regulation. There's two parts. There's a compare the responses of named ectothermic and endothermic organisms and explain how these responses assist in temperature regulation. The so first part was we have to compare named, so we actually have to give two examples, one of an endotherm, one of an ectotherm, by their actual name. So for example, we'll have the red kangaroo and the blue tongue lizard in this video. So compare the responses and also we have to explain their responses. So how these responses actually help maintain their body temperature. So explain responses. So we'll do both of these in this video. Before we start, we'll make sure we go over all these terms that come in the slip stop point. We've got organisms. Now an organism is just any living thing. So any living thing is an organism. So we have to have one ectothermic and one endothermic organism. Um, so it could be anything. Anything is living. But again, we've chosen the red kangaroo and the blue tongue lizard in this video. And also we have something called the ambient temperature. And this is just ambient temperature, it's just the outside temperature. So for example, if it's 25 degrees and sunny outside, then the ambient temperature is 25 degrees Celsius whereas our body temperature would be 20, uh, 37 degrees Celsius. So the ambient temperature is whatever the outside temperature is. Also there's these two words, ectothermic and endothermic, which were obviously int first introduced in this video, and I'll cover them now because these are really important. So first we've got the endoth endotherm. Endo means inside, and therm means temperature. So endotherms, are organisms or living things that can maintain their own body temperature through, with the help of their body, so with the help of their insides, so their body. So for example, these are, are organisms that can um, make their blood vessels dilate or that can sweat because these are things which happen inside their body. That have, it's movement of blood and, and everything else. So Endotherms are examples of this, so the ones that, that can do homeostasis. Endotherms are organisms that can do homeostasis. And two classes of organisms are your mammals and your birds. Now remember, it says we need to have a named response, a named or a named ectotherm and endotherm. These are not your named ones, these are just your classes. So we have to still go more specific. And we have chosen the red kangaroo as our mammal. So the red kangaroo is our named endotherm. On the other side, we've got ectotherms. Ecto means in, outside. And therm means temperature again, obviously, like it did last time. Now, these are organisms which have, can't maintain their own body temperature f with the help of their body. They have whatever the outside temperature is, is also their inside temperature. So if, for example, if it's freezing cold outside, if it's zero degrees outside, and you have an a ectotherm running outside, then their internal temperature will be zero degrees Celsius. They can't maintain it at a fine level like endotherms can. So outside temperature, the ones that have the outside temperature are the ectotherms, and the classes, not the species, but the classes are your fish, your amphibians, that's your frogs and the like, we have also your insects and your reptiles. So these are the examples of classes that belong to the ectothermic or cold-blooded in the old dated word for it. These are your um, classes which are ectotherms. And the example I've used in this video for ectotherms is your blue tongue lizard, which is a reptile. So now we have our named ectotherms and endotherms, so the red kangaroo and the blue tongue lizard. Now we have to compare their responses. 
So the responses are for both. We have to have for the too hot. So what happens if the temperature is too hot and if the temperature is too cold? So first we're going to compare. And as soon as we compare, we're also going to explain. So when it's too hot, what the reckoning rule will do, it will actually lick its paws. So lick its paws here. We'll take that paw, lick it. And the reason why it does that is because if it's licking its paws, it becomes more wet. More water on its paws means more evaporation, so more water can evaporate. And the same reason why we sweat, the more sweat evaporates, the more it cools. And if we have more water on our paws, that means more evaporation and more cooling. So if it's hot, it will lick our paws, not we, but the great kangaroo will, so that more evaporation happens, which means it will cool down inside as well. So that's how we had a response. We named the response and we explained why it was important. That's what we have to do for this dot point. It can also seek shelter. When it seeks shelter, that means that it will hide somewhere, goes away from the actual sun. And that happens because a cooler place will mean that the temperature will go down as well. So seeking shelter is useful because it will be at a cooler place, which means that its internal temperature will also decrease as well. Now another one is your blood vessels dilate. And we said that endotherms can do this. And blood vessels dilating means that you have more heat reaching your limbs, so your, le your legs, legs and your arms. And it also means that more heat is lost. So blood vessels dilate, so more heat is lost. These are the three responses that your red kangaroo can do when it's too hot. Whereas your blue tongue lizard, these are the responses. Now we're comparing the ones from your red kangaroo to the ones from your blue tongue lizard. These can um, seek shelter, same reason. Just seek shelter so they go to a cooler place. And remember, whatever the outside temperature is for an ectotherm is also their inside temperature. So in this case, if this lizard goes to a cooler place, it will have a cooler internal temperature as well. So it goes to a cooler place, so that decreases its temperature. And also can rise its body, raise its body or rise its body. And here this is a bad, my bad attempt at drawing a blue tongue lizard. And you can imagine if it rises its body, that means it's going to have only parts exposed and other parts are blocked from the sun. So I'm going to show you the sun rays. They come here. They're going to hit his head, but his body is blocked. So that means less sun and that means less heat overall. So for him to rise his, raise his body, that means only parts will be exposed and the rest will be blocked from the sun. So rising his body means less exposed, less exposed to the sun, and that means Overall, less um, less hotness will come, so the body temperature will rise less as well. That's less exposed. So then we have for too cold. For the kangaroo, it will do. It will hop more. Or it will actually do more hopping, so more physical activity. Same reason why we might go in for a run. If you go for a run, we become really hot. And the same with the kangaroo. If it hops around more, it will increase its temperature, so that increases body temp increases body temp and that's good because if it's too cold it wants to increase the body temp. Also blood vessels constrict, that's the opposite of blood vessels dilate, that means it becomes smaller and that means less heat is lost, less heat lost to surroundings. Again that's good if it's too cold it wants to make sure its blood vessels constrict because otherwise it will lose too much um, heat. Its hair stand up and the reason why its hair stand up, if you think of like hair and then you have these, this heat, it can get trapped. It will get trapped at the hair itself. So the hair stand up and that allows us to trap heat. And we want to keep heat if it's too cold. Same with basking in the sun. Now basking in the sun is this opposite of seeking shelter. That means you just get a sun bath more or less. You go sun tanning. And that's good for the red kangaroo. If it's too cold, it will seek more sun because the sun heats it up. Yeah, and the reckoning we do, will do this when it's too cold. So now if you compare those responses to ones which the blue tongue, blue tongue lizard have, so the ectotherm, the blue tongue lizard will also bask in sun, and the same reason as I mentioned for the red kangaroo, so that the sun heats it up. And it also can uncurl its tail. 
So here is the tail itself. Again, this is a bad drawing of a blue tongue lizard. But what you can imagine, if the tail is exposed to fullest, that means the surface area will also be increased. And that means more area will get more sunshine. And that means overall more heat. Being, so there's more heating of the lizard, more heating of lizard, because there's more sun rays which can hit his tail. So for this dot point, you need to be able to think, Nate, remember these responses. You need to remember one doesn't have to be blue tongue lizard and red kangaroo. You just have to have one Australian or general, one endotherm and one ectotherm. You need to remember his, the actual response it has to be able to respond to higher to low temperatures. But you need to also be able to explain why these are important. So how they help with maintaining boiled temperatures as well. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.